tape number three, just to mention a couple of other things. I you think better that mention the date again. Of today, I will. Um, we're at Mom and Larry's uh, home on Three Fountains Drive in Provo, mm -hmm. November 17, 2009. Um, Larry's gone hunting in South Dakota with his boys pheasant hunting, <laughs> and so Lisa is here staying with Mom, and I came down for this afternoon, and we decided to do some recording. So that's a little background just about this. Um, you saved me you days and days of riding. That's right. Yeah, and I'm actually 57 years old, and you're how old? I'm 51. And Mom just is 77 seven. years old. Yeah, I'm going on eight. <laughs> and I'm, I doubt I'll make it. So, okay. so she says that because she has cancer of the liver, and so she doesn't think she's going to get to see her next birthday. Oh. Okay. So we just got her with tape two. We got ourselves to Sugar City, which was about the early part of 1960, and so we're going to talk about just different memories of Sugar six City. Children. Well, she had five at the time, so let's get Mike in there then. I mean, even though it jumps forward a little. Well, not too much. He was born in December of 1965 in Sugar City. I, I mean, when we lived in Sugar City. I remember when he was born crying when Dad came home and told me it was a boy. Because I thought... Oh, you crying. Yeah, I was yeah. crying because it was a because he was a boy, because I thought, sure, we'd have a girl, I guess. I would have been seven, just turned seven. And I would have been 13. I remember him being really sick. Yeah, he had the crew. Periods of time or something. Oh, yes. And, and he was in the TV room. And mom being in worn out. And I couldn't. And a tent over the crew. Yeah. And so we took, some of us, I remember t taking turns staying, I mean, sleeping in there, and when he'd start coughing really bad, having to pick him up and use that plunger, that little bulb thing. The booger to, getter. Yeah, to <laughs> suck stuff out of his throat. Really? Uh-huh. Well, you had the humidifier going yeah, inside the, the tent. We had a couch in there that with, well, you could cock it up the and the side would flop down and you could sleep on there. Oh. That, it was a brown couch. Yeah. Uh, but I made a tent over the crib. Yeah. With a sheet. Yeah. Okay, so we've got Mike there. So now there's six children. Um, I, so I do guess we have to go backwards to talk about your playing baseball and stuff Well, like that? I don't know. We could just I mean, talk about whatever. But were you younger than that, at the, I guess? How old were you when you were playing baseball? Eight. Oh, well, that was way before now. Well, 8, 9, 10, 11, and 12. But I only remember playing baseball in Sugar City. But let's let's just talk about different family things, I guess, that we might remember. Well, I wanted to talk about the baseball because that was a highlight of my youth. It was? Yeah, because we got to go to the cafe after your game, oh. and I got to order French fries and a milkshake, and yeah, that was slipping to me. Mary was Riddle. That over in... Mary's Falls. No, that over to, was it Fell and Mary's? Is that what no. it's called now? What was the cafe? Mar oh, in Sugar. Yeah, I I don't remember the name of the cafe. I just remember that Mary Riddle oh. owned it, and we'd go there, and there was a counter, a bar, yeah. there that we'd sit on stools, and we could order French fries. Or it seemed like she had candy there too. Yeah, there's candy and beer and milkshake. Milkshakes, milkshakes, ice cream. That we could order. That was big stuff. And, and actually, just a side note, baseball was a huge part of my life from 8 to 12. So I, were you the only boy who played? No. I, well, I don't remember. I, I think Dave did, but I just don't remember the other kids. Do you I, remember going over to Milan? Going to Malad two years. Yeah. I mean, that's the only for a tournament. Well, for two tournaments at the end of the year, the, an All Star tournament, and that's the only place I ever hit a home run over a fence. Well, that's a was when warm I was twelve at Malad. Oh yeah, it was living because they gave us like two dollars a day to eat on. We were being paid. 
and we because <laughs> you were the all star. Well, we'd go down there, and there was somebody named Smith that owned a home that yeah. he let us stay in, or something. And they we were out on the ranch, and we would sleep in sleeping bags on the floor. So was Dad your coach, or did he just go? He and Ted Holman. Dad was the sponsor. We were Lymans of Madison County mm -hmm. for the two years, and Ted Holman and. Del, Del and Virgin, maybe, Del, yeah. were the coaches at least one year. No kidding. And uh, we took consolation championship at least one year. Meaning fourth place? Or something? Um, third, probably. And uh, we would uh, eat breakfast, which we could go to the cafe, and we'd put money. They had a little jukebox things that you could put money table. in at the table and it would play a record and we would play the Four Seasons, Sherry and Big Girls Don't Cry and that's <laughs> when I hear those songs that's what that reminds me of. And then after the games they'd let us go swimming at the pool. And you would have been eight or nine? No, I'd be 11 and 12 <laughs> in these. And then one year we went to Sun Valley at least one year Yeah. when I was younger and we there's a picture of uh, I can't. Remember. I think me and Dad standing there with my baseball uniform. But see, that was bigger than life. Yeah. And we, in fact, the one game we played, Filer went 12 innings, and we won in the bottom of the 12th inning to get like into the semifinals or something. Yeah. It was the longest game they'd ever had, and that was <laughs> played in Ketchum. The games were played in Sun Valley and in Ketchum. We don't need to talk That's about That's cool. Speaking of swimming, do you remember going to Riverside? Because yes, that was the cats to me. Taking swimming lessons in the summer, yeah. is that what yeah. you mean? Well, I guess I just remember going down there and they had a slide. But I don't even remember, like, where was that between Rexburg and Rigby. Riverside? Off the main road. You can yeah. go by there. It's still there without a pool. But there's a kind of a... Is it a There's town a called Riverside? No. Mm -mm. That was just the name but of it. It's just down by the Riverside. I see. Down by where Mindy and Jody Robison, Kaylin's sister, live. It's down along that area. But I remember those, and then the great thing was after we'd get done with the swimming lessons, we'd buy that taffy and eat it on the bus on the way back well, to Riverside. That must have been the thing, because I remember buying that taffy at Green Canyon. And those big suckers, do you remember those? They had those great big suckers, and if you got one that had a star on it, uh, and you opened it up, you got it. a free one. Yeah. Green Canyon. You remember going there? Oh, I remember going to Green Canyon well, a lot of times. I know, but when you had kids? And that was in the day when they would drain the pool every night, and we yeah, could stay and great. play in the pool and slide down the as it bottom was as it was draining. So would it just have been our family that went up there? You you just took us up there, do you think? Or well, uh, I don't or did we go with the Holmans? Or I don't remember doing that. I don't remember. And then when we got older, I remember going with the Scouts, to, and then as a class in school. Didn't want, is that when like Kurt Grover about drowned yeah, up there or something? When we were there with the Scouts, Mr. Grover was the Scoutmaster, and Lynn Briggs. Well, now was that was that before the new pool was built, or and it was still in the old wooden one up on the hill? No, no. We, we have no remembrance of the wooden one on oh, the hill. Oh, you don't have in the old hay barn I jumped out of the rafters no. up there one day. No. <laughs> but there was just such a smell when you walked into the pool at Green Canyon. Yeah, it was a great smell, and then we uh, sometime later when we would roast hot dogs in that big fireplace. Yeah. And we'd order hamburgers and a lot of great memories. Well, the Thurston kids were always good kids. Who, who's that? That's the people that own it. No, the Nibers. Well, the <laughs> Nibers and the Thuissons. I don't remember the Thuissons. But, well, uh, but the Nibers. Oh, yeah, it was the Nibers. I don't know why Thuisson came. They had kids your age, didn't they, Matt? The yeah. Nibers. Bill was a year yeah. younger, who now owns it, and Randy was a year older, was Paul's age. Have you got one of those books that they made? Uh-huh. 
And even today when we go back up there, it has lots of great memories. And then hunting up Canyon Creek. And uh, the Jeep episode, is that the one you... Well, I just know of the stories of you guys pouring mush in the Jeep. I can't radio. remember. I think it was Jeff. Me and Jeff was with Dad, and we hit a tree stump and knocked a hole so in the radiator. So you were hunting, that's why you were up there? I don't remember specifically, but Dad poured mush in there, and it would plug it up for a while, and then we'd have to get out and pour more mush in as we made it back to Sugar, but I remember making it back. And using the Buick station wagon, which was gold colored and had that yeah. window in the top. The curved windows up, up on the top side. And then the white Pontiac station wagon is hunting vehicles and going <laughs> over sagebrush as tall as the car almost, it seemed like to me. I mean, Dad, yeah. Dad was not gentle with the vehicles, was he, Mom? No, he got that thing high centered on a road like this up there somewhere on the dry farms and what do you do? Okay, yeah. no, we went someplace, all of us, at, like to Jackson or someplace and the car broke down and you and I stayed with the car. What? To, that was what over in story? Wyoming. Over, and so what's the story of well, that? Well, just a minute. And so your dad had jacked the car up and push oh, and we push it, yeah. <laughs> Jack it up and Jack push it. it. And I push do. It over. I remember that. that to keep until you got it off the center, high center. Yeah. Okay, that's funny. See resourcefulness. Yeah, it? yeah. So what about the Wyoming story? Because I just have this really vague memory of you and I staying in that car. And I don't know. I well, I think Paul was all that went with your dad. Couldn't have been very Something old. went wrong with the car. And of course, you didn't have any tools in it. And so, but I had sleeping bags and water and stuff to eat, matches and things. Where did they walk to? Off across the plain. So would that have they, been when we well went the, to Virginia no, City? Well, I no. Don't know. no. Let's see if it's because we were up by we'd gone up to see Blaine Lyman up at Ten Sleep area. Yeah. And the car had broken down. Blaine up Lyman there. not being Uncle Blaine. No. That's correct. Um, but he's a distant cousin. And the car broke down and dad and I walked. Was it you went with your dad? Well, in this story I remember going to these people's homes and I don't have any recollection as to what we did from that point on. You know, if they went and got us and we stayed at their house, or if no. they fixed the car or towed it somewhere, I don't. That I don't remember, but I. Do they borrowed some tools, and I doubt they ever got returned. I only ever he got, got he got the car got home. the car car running, and I don't remember where we wound up that night. Sleeping bags out, and I was gonna yeah. fix this, fix our beds and eat and stuff. And that he finally came back. He took the flashlight and one of you boys. Yeah, I, I remember at least me going. Yeah. And another fun story along that line is when we got caught in the snowstorm up deer hunting up above the dry farms. You know, it started to, we'd been up there hunting, Uncle Jack was there, the yeah. Spaldings were there. Yeah. Norma Jean and no. no. Um, Goldine's parents that lived a little bit by Angie and by Grandma and Grandpa. Oh, was that who that was, Goldine's parents? Um, anyway. We'd been up there, and this, we I think we knew the storm was coming or something, because we started to head down at some point in the day, but we got caught in the storm, and I remember it being night, and one vehicle getting stuck, and then another one getting stuck, and then us kids being hauled into some cabin. Yeah, your dad broke the lock off of it. Some dry farm cabin oh, down there to stay was, the night. Uh, yeah. And I don't know if he ever called them and told them. And Uncle Jack had the gray pickup, as I remember, yeah. and I don't remember the other vehicles. Wasn't there just the two? I thought there were three, but maybe two. But for some reason, I remember Uncle Jack 
been there and the Spalding's been there. So I thought there Spalding. was Spalding. Was no Stoddard. Oh. Not Spalding. Yeah, Stoddard. Stoddard. They're friends. Spalding Stoddard is who it was. That was my age. Yeah. That married Linda Holman eventually. Oh right, right. And well, and then another time was when Dad got lost or got stuck out there hunting and sorry. Mom, you and me and Paul were up at the campsite and we I remember hearing the gunshots or something and then the next morning you went down to Zeke Ward's. Yeah, to, I threatened you guys if you left that tent. <laughs> <laughs> Would it have been just us two that you remember? It was Philip it could have been Philip with you. I I just don't remember. Well, I know Philip and and Jack were with us the time we went to the cabin. Yeah. Stay broke in. But I think this was a he was not he might not have been there. But you went down to Zeke Ward's and as you guys were trying to get the vehicle out of their driveway, I we were in the back jumping up and down on the rear axle because it was slick. Give or it weight. And Dad walked down the creek or something. And yeah. that's when he got lost? No, he had yeah. been lost. He'd, He'd been, been out, out all night. night. And I remember him saying he burned a $70 check trying, you... trying to get a fire started. Well, it's a wonder he didn't freeze to death. Well, yeah, but I think he had a horse, didn't he? And then the uh -uh. next... No. Because I thought the next morning he... Or no, he, and he let the horse go because he knew it would go back or something, whether it was the next morning or that night or something. Because he where knew. were you at up to White Owl Canyon no, Creek we were area? On Canyon Creek. But it was snowing, and that's why he got lost. I, I do you remember, Mom? Why he got stuck out there? Because I well, don't. he stayed too late, and it got door, dark. So it wasn't weather. Well, then it'd been fall. fall. Now, I remember camping with the Holmans up to... Elk um, Meadows, probably. What was it? They went to Elk Meadows a Elk lot. Elk Meadows? Is that where it was Up called? in the Moody Creek area. Yeah, there. Moody Creek. That sounds right to me. Yeah. That was the fun time I remember that. Well, they were up there, and I took you and... Was it Patrice? There were three of you girls. And uh, I didn't have a vehicle, and, and uh, Jetty Sue brought her old pickup over. She says it slips out of gear sometimes. <laughs> Jetty Sue Virgin. Uh-huh. And uh, I, you know, I'd been there, but I didn't know in the dark to go up there driving around and stuff. But I went right straight to the place. To where the Holmans were camped uh -huh, down. Where they were camped and got the uh, plastic out and spread it over the thing for a tent, and, which was a bad mistake. It was a moonlight night and it was a clear plastic. Oh. Moon shined all night in my eyes. Well, Sugar City was a great place to be raised. Yeah, I, I loved Sugar City personally. Had great friends that Me I'm too. still friends with. Well, yeah, and they were all good. Except the I, plumber's boy. I think all of us really had good friends that we're still friends with, it seems like to me. Except Mike, I guess, who was too young. Because he was nine when we moved to California, I think. And so, um, if we got there in early 60, the divorce took place in 76, in the spring of 76, and the flood came in June of 76, yeah, yeah. the Teton Dam flood. Yeah. So, people, uh, 16 temple. years, that's how I long we were just there. amazed that I was in the Teton Dam. Really? <laughs> oh. Yeah, so it so was... So, did the Grovers live there the whole... Were they there when we moved there? No. Uh, the, uh, they owned the, the hills. Drug store, hills. 
Harold, Harold, Harold Hill. Harold, Harold and, and Reba, Reba, Reba Joyce Hill. Ritchie Hill, <laughs> who was my third grade teacher. <laughs> only, uh, only you would remember Well, that. the re re reason that I got in trouble for shooting <laughs> spit wads one time, and she made me make piles of spit wads after class or something. Anyway, for some but reason. Did her husband have the drugstore or yeah. something? Yeah, the drugstore when we were little. That's Had why he was nice to us, I guess, when we went in there later on or something. And then the Grovers came. Yeah, and they... Because they moved they, to Rexburg. They moved to Rexburg and built a house, I think. And they had Marsha. Well, that's Lawrence and Elna. Yeah, and their kids were oh, Marsha. Oh, and Lawrence and Elna still lived in their house. No, when we first moved there. Oh, they, when we first yeah. moved there. They, I'm not sure, but just, they, yeah, they lived over at the dairy farm in Rexburg. They had four kids, Marsha and Matt and Kurt and Jason. Is that right? Mm -hmm. Yes. Now, the Hills had a girl named Boleyn who was oh, a year older yeah. than me that I thought was the cats. When, yeah, she was the cats. I when think. I was younger. And then on the other side of us was constant. Spain and on the other side of her were the walkers. Uh -huh. Yes, and then to the south of us was Bish Ricks. Is that right? <laughs> okay, what was his wife's name? That's what I, Mom and I were trying to remember. Oh, Bish. Was it Ruby? No. And they had a greenhouse, yeah. didn't uh -huh. they? Across the alley from the Alamo. Yeah. I went over there one morning and knocked on the door, and Bish came to the door, and he was all beat up. And I said, Good. Reef fish, what happened to you? Did you have a wreck? Oh, hell, Dee, I got drunk and <laughs> fell down the stairs. <laughs> and you found him dead. No, no it was no, somebody else. Another guy at back of their house, though, back of their flower shop. He had had a heart attack or something? or. Well, he was a cripple, and he had lived oh, there yeah. with his mother for years. And I looked out the bathroom window upstairs, you know, like we could see into their backyard. Yeah. And he was at the faucet. Well, he was always out there. He gardened out there. And every time I walked by, I'd look at, and he was still there. And he's still there. So I decided to check into things. And so we went over and I says, Bish, I think we might have a problem out back. Do you want to come out with me? And uh, he you was went, dead. Now, wait a minute. You went over to who? Bish Ricks. To Bish Ricks. I know, but who were you talking to if he's the one that was dead? Bish wasn't dead. Who was dead? I can't remember what his name oh, was. Oh, another guy? First. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I thought, oh. No. I thought it was Bish that no. you found. No. Oh. Bish lived here. The Madge. Huh? Her name was Madge. Madge. Ricks. No? No. no. That was Hap and Madge. Oh, for goodness sake. <laughs> uh, the alley was here, and Bish lived right here on the alley. Right. And... They lived in this house that was over here on the other, face the other street. To the oh. south of them? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. And so we did. He went out there with me and that fellow. He was a cripple, uh, had been all his oh, life. Oh, yeah, and there for a minute. I... And uh, good grief, the people would, I don't I guess they must have put it in the paper that I found him. Because you were the hero? Because everybody was saying, asking me about, who was that man that you found dead? And the town sheriff, was he a sheriff? Zeke Coleman? Oh, Zeke? No. Um, Viv Harris. Yeah, Viv Harris was the... What was Zeke? Zeke Coleman was the... Justice of the Peace. No. No? Well, he drove around the No, car. he didn't. <laughs> yes, he did. Well, I don't remember Z. Coleman being something official. I don't either. He was the man, the postman. Who? No. No, that no. was Lloyd Luke. Z. Coleman in the church news once was the longest-running home teacher in the church or nah, something. Nah, true. <laughs> something, yeah, when he was older. But Viv Harris, he, he had, had a mustache. Yeah, yeah, that was Bonnie's dad, Bonnie oh, Coleman's was? dad. Yeah. Uh, one day at church, I don't know whose little kid it was, went up to Zeke and says, Mr. Coleman, why do you come to church? All you do is sleep. And he says, well, Sonny, at least the Lord knows whose side I'm on. <laughs> <laughs> he, he's, he had the best 
green apples on the planet. And they were better if you stole them than if you asked for them. <laughs> they tasted better. But I got caught doing that, too. Is he the one that was the constabule when you guys no. had that was Viv, wasn't No, it? that was Rondo Barris. Oh, was Rondo Barris when, the first When you had to do your little community service project? Yeah, that project. was David King and I letting air out of tires on Halloween. We didn't slice them, we just let the air out of them. And Somebody ratted on us, and so we got hauled down to Rondo Barris, who was the justice of the peace or whatever, town clerk or something. And anyway, three hours of hard labor cleaning out the city ditch over at the Well, Rondo park. Barris was the music teacher at the high school, and yeah. he always would say to, you know how, especially music classes, you're, the kids are kind of wild and stuff like that, and he'd always say, I'm going to kick a lung out of you, brother. Yeah. That was... And, Always his speech. And he, when I was like in seventh grade or something in choir, I formed a strike that we, the boys would we would not sing in his class, and we got to do push-ups in front of the It went real well. <laughs> and then when I was wanting to do my music merit badge, um, I was not in good graces for getting the music merit badge, which I think Boy, he, that's a shock. He actually. Then, let me get it, but. Well, I have really good memories of the football life at our house. When we played high school uh -huh. football. Uh-huh, and the, the field was across the tracks on the west, west end of town, of down behind where Rob Lawson. At least until Matt and Paul were both in crutches one time, and they got in a fight going up the stairs, and I had to go get Lawrence. Bro because they broke their legs a week apart. From each Two other. weeks apart. I was on the sideline. I was a sophomore, and I think it was Kelly Wazden that did an end run. They came around where we were standing, and I got caught between the players that tackled him and the bench, and it snapped my left leg just well, above that's the not ankle. Very glorious. <laughs> no, I was just on the <laughs> sideline, but that's one whatever. Of the funny times. And Paul's was two weeks later. At, or? Out at Salmon. Yeah. I re I do remember that one. By one of our own team. Could have been. I don't yeah. remember how I broke. But it. and Dave, he was the running back while you were. The when I was a senior, he was a sophomore, and. Bill Hollis was the main quarterback, and I was a second string, but I started a couple of games, and then I was the safety, defensive safety. But So Paul played, what grade were you in when Paul was playing? Junior, and he was a senior. Except for this, the experience and of Dave, the broken legs was when Paul was a junior and I was a sophomore. Oh, it was the same kid on our team that broke the both of them. Well, then it would have been Kelly Wallace. Yeah, that's, I, yeah. I kind of remember that. I, I didn't. I remember there was a game going on, and it must have been my birthday because you gave me my birthday present at the football game, and it was a pair of high boots Nancy with fur Sinatra on the top. Boots. Yep, and they laced up, and man, I thought I was it. That was living. I I don't know. And then this thing that Mom was talking about, this fight, Paul and I got into something, and, and Dad was gone, and we were on the stairs there in the Sugar City home, and swinging our crutches at each around. other and bouncing down the stairs, and Mom had to go get Mr. Grover to settle it out, I guess. I do remember that. And too. Jeff broke his nose yeah. by, in a football game. And they just took him over and laid him on the grass, and Bonnie got a blanket and put it over him that was raining. <laughs> Well, I went on my mission. But the football field had been moved then. It was the new field that Jeff played on, yeah. I'm pretty sure. I left in September of 71, and so Dave would have been a junior, no, a senior at that time. And then Jeff probably would have been about a sophomore. And then when I came back, Jeff was a senior, and I remember watching him play. He seemed like he was the center linebacker or something on defense. Yeah. Which one of the Walker girls was it that Lee Sue felt married? It, that was a McCaig, Connie McCaig. Oh, McCaig. But Connie, I can't place her. Where are they at? Do you know? They live kind of out in Archer, I think. Oh, they're back in Rexburg? Mm -hmm. What's he doing there? I don't know. Another fun little memory for me in Sugar City was 
Kenny Matthews and I used to could steal things out of the sugar murk. You and what? That is a fun memory. <laughs> and Mrs. Garn, did she clerk there for Newbold when he owned it? I don't. What's it? What was it? Bob Newbold. No, is no. that right? <laughs> <laughs> that was Uncle George's partner, Bob Raybould. Yeah, Ray Bob Newbold, or Bob Newhart is the comedian. <laughs> Let me think, Mr. Newbold, we used to call him Low Pat. Yeah. <laughs> because he was bald, kind of, and he had a funny shaped head. He owned the store, and we used to call him Headloaf, isn't that right? I can't, it was something. <laughs> I think it was But we had stolen something and walked out of the Merck and then walked east over towards the Emer building and she came out, I thought it was Mrs. Garn, and said, would you guys like to come back and pay for that stuff? <laughs> and so she walked back into the store, so as she walked back in, we took the stuff and threw it down along the side of the store, you know, and walked back <laughs> in and lied about everything, said, we don't have anything, you know, whatever. You didn't pay for it? Oh, no. <laughs> Just every day of my life since, I paid for it, but not then I didn't, and I didn't pay any money for it, but. We lived a life of crime. Unbeknownst to you, I used to steal Nightcrawler money to go over and buy Pop Tarts at the Merc. <laughs> That's where all that worm money went. That's right. <laughs> so, as I recall, that ended my life of crime in stealing that was from the, the last Merc. Time. Yeah, I don't remember doing he it. He used to say, Mr. Newbold, you'd go in there, and if you're in there very long, he'd say, On delay, on delay. He, he wants you to get out of this store. <laughs> if you're not going to buy, get out. I wish I could remember his Oh, uh, and Mr. Thomas owned it before then. Yeah. Mm, I don't know. Yeah, Thomas owned it before the New Bulls bought it. <laughs> now, what was my I name? shouldn't confess all these things, yeah, but I'm going to tell you another story. Kenny Matthews and I went out, and we collected a whole bunch of pop bottles. To you redeem? Know, yeah, you could redeem, like, for two cents a piece or a penny a piece. I don't remember what it was. And, Anyway, so we had a bunch because we'd gone out on the roads Why outside of town. The railroad tracks. We'd just gone everywhere, and well, and just in a day, and we went there to redeem them. And he put us in the back to, you know, count them out. And that, of course, we were back there where all a bunch of other empty ones were, and so we just <laughs> put them in our pile. We made a why we made I'm a lot here. of money that day. I just sit by that thief. <laughs> Her, my mom is ashamed of me. Your own mother's me. disassociating <laughs> herself from you. Well, a man's got to make a living, you know. Yeah. <laughs> and we sold, legitimately, we would hunt night crawlers. Mm -hmm. And we sold night crawlers there on the road because it was the main road up to Island Park we had in Yellowstone. A, we, some, somebody, I don't know who, which one of you it was, built a wooden trough in the garage. Yeah, it was a three-sided trough, I and it was full of night crawlers. bus bedding or something. Yeah, yeah, bus bedding. It seemed like we had one of those galvanized tubs that we kept our stuff in. And they were big night crawlers. And who was the GA that stopped there and bought night crawlers? And we'd save milk. It was Hubie Brown. Hubie Brown. Yeah. And you were embarrassed because my shirt was dirty. <laughs> I remember that. <laughs> well, there's a, a fun water. little moment. <laughs> yeah, they were on their way to Yellowstone or Island Park, but we mm -hmm. used to... Save and Grandma used to save the milk cartons. Right. We cut the bottom off so they were like this tall. And then you could put a dozen in mm -hmm. there. Yeah, how many million of those I picked up? Now that's savings. why your fingers. Look at those fingers. That's why your fingers have big knots on <laughs> From the ends of them. Night crawler knots. Huh? We used to call it going night crawler, and <clears throat> you know there's night crawlers here. We don't care. I don't know. We're and not, we're not getting another. Them. I want to comment about Mom's flower beds because. I remember your, your flower, flower beds around the house because they were always gorgeous and people always commented and people would stop and take pictures of. And of course, we would have nothing to do with it. You'd probably try to get us to go weed and we'd probably <laughs> evade that like the plague. And I do remember we had a garden one time across the alley behind Bish Rix's. You'd planted yeah. a garden and you wanted us kids to help weed that and of course, We'd have nothing to do with that, and I remember the weeds being as tall as the corn. I don't know why I still have that memory, but of course the garden didn't pan out because we wouldn't do anything in it. Well, I had to do something in the flowers once because I, 
It was in the fall and those big alyssums and you had you kind of folded them over and pulled them up by the root and I was scared to death of the snails or slugs or whatever it was that was under there. You'd pick up night crawlers. But yeah, <laughs> I hated those. Well, a point about some of this is that as much as I wouldn't do anything as a kid, I love gardening now. So it gives me hope that sometimes when young people won't do anything, that if you'll just hold on, they could turn out to be humans. And I actually have some initiative have or something. The behind Bishrix's house, before you got to the Rose house down the alley, there was kind of a... Where, uh, maybe it's where the garden yeah, was. Yeah, it was but, an open yeah. But one year, the, the red roots or whatever was so tall, and we made a hut in there, and you'd go in and chop down some to kind of make a little path to get in there. Yeah. And we took a sheet out and laid it over the top, and it was like a hut, and it was all just way cool. And then Jeff, Jeff, his friends, some of his friends were Matt Grover across the street and Brent Walker, and they had the MJB Club. For Matt, Jeff, and Brenton, they built a clubhouse out back where the yeah. sandbox used yeah. to be. Back of the yard. Here's a little story I'll tell. One year, for Christmas, Jeff got a Beetle Bailey set with a blow-up bridge. Beetle Bailey? Yeah, the, yeah. the commie It's a little army, army set with little green man. And mm -hmm. I don't know, something you set the bridge off and it would blow up. And I threw a walleye fit because he got that army set. And so the day after Christmas, Dad took me to Western Auto and got me a set <laughs> because I was such a spoiled snot head that I cried and had a fit. But I'll tell you, Jeff and I had lots of fun in the sandbox with that Beetle Bailey set. We well, make roads. Which and reminds us of the, our Christmas shopping was on Christmas Eve you know, at State Hardware in, in Idle Idle Falls. Falls. Do you remember that, Mom? That no. It seemed like every Christmas yeah. Eve, we always waited till the last minute on Christmas Eve, and then we'd go down to State Hardware. We'd go to the State Hardware store, the bookstore, and then we'd go to the bakery and get those fruit pizzas. pizzas. Those strawberry pizzas or mm -hmm. something. To get I think to about the, those every once in a while. But do you remember, Mom, one time you and I were going to Idaho Falls or coming back from Idaho Falls, and the roads were slick, and we did a 360 in the car? On the black ice. Just on that road between Idaho Falls and Rexburg. The old highway. Huh. Yeah, I'll know. tell you that that was like the great night was going to the state hardware store. And I remember listening on the radio when we're all in the car that Santa Claus had taken off. <laughs> <laughs> that was so great. You, were you home? Okay, one Christmas, Mike got up at 4 o'clock in the morning and opened all of his presents and went back to bed. <laughs> I don't remember that. I think maybe you were older. Yeah, you would have been older because he was nine when when um, Mom moved to California. Yes. But, so it would have been one of the later Christmases anyway when I... Jeff and I got up, I beat the tar out of Mike <laughs> because I was so mad that he'd ruined our Christmas. Well, and I remember as a kid there that uh, Christmas, Christmas Eve was the longest night by far because you could never go to sleep and the morning would never come. And we were not allowed to go downstairs, but it seemed like we'd get up at 5. You'd let us get up at 5 a.m. To come downstairs, do you remember one way or the other what time it was when you'd allow us? Mm -hmm. Maybe it was seven. But probably I, wasn't five. So it was probably seven. We'd probably wake up at five and lay yeah. there for two hours staring at the ceiling because we just couldn't hardly we couldn't stand it. It really was the greatest time. Okay, go ahead, mom and lived out east of Rexburg. This is when Mom was a child. And we didn't have electricity, and so we had candles on the trees. So when Mother finally let us light the candles, she'd bring in a bucket of water and set it there by the tree, and then we could light the candles on the Christmas tree. Oh, a bucket of water, so in case it caught well, on fire. Well, so if it caught on fire, because it, it was... <laughs> Yeah. Wax candles. And yeah. 
Okay, tell it again. What do you remember? Oh, the first doll I ever remember getting was at Christmas time. And I don't know if I ever had another one or not. Do you remember how old and where you lived? Well, we lived on the farm out east of Rexford. And I probably wasn't in school yet. Mm. But Mother started me to school when I was five, so that Elaine didn't have to walk to school by herself. Mm. So, so we could mention about the time when the children were piling out of the upstairs window into the bushes covered with snow out front. You mean just that we jumped? <laughs> yes. This is along Main Street, the house, the north side of the house that faced Main Street. We would jump out of the upstairs window. We'd get out on the ledge and jump down into the shrubs, which were big Bitzers or something. Yeah. And that's, there'd oh, be a it's lot a of miracle they weren't all busted. Yeah, it out is. And that's it's, true. But I think we broke them down enough so that in the summer you could kind of go in behind them and have little Pots. rooms, hiding places. Over mom's begonias that were always planted in the yeah. little places that you went into. Yeah, probably something. And we like had that. a bush on the east side of the house that had the little orange berries. Well, climber. Was it? No. Do you remember that, Matt? I, the way the flower bed was designed along between us and the beans, it came along and then it came in towards the house, like yeah. an yeah, island. Yeah, this bush was a, a, on the house side. Oh, I don't remember. There were lilac trees between oh. us and Mrs. I yeah. stuffed one of those up my nose once, and I was really worried about getting it out. One of those so little hard. berries. Yeah. Well, we, another memory is we played steal the flag at our house. It was a great steal the flag house because you'd put a flag on the north and the south side and then you'd go yeah. around. And our code was coming around the other side, yeah. which meant yeah. like the east side. And I can't remember what the other... And we played Annie I over a lot. Yeah. You, you were able to get a ball over that yeah. house. Yeah. You good, but you could. And then we... I played lots and lots of baseball in the backyard with socks Softball. that were rolled up because we didn't have little wiffle balls and so we'd take socks and roll them up and put elastics, a whole bunch of elastics around them and then we would hit it uh, and we had a home run fence which was the sidewalk. And second base was on the other side of the driveway. Which was a half moon driveway and I remember that when the road Fremont Avenue was gravel because I'd yeah. spend lots of time out there playing home run derby by myself hitting rocks with a stick. Well, you didn't learn much in Gridley then or wherever it was you couldn't throw rocks. I was yeah. hitting them down towards people. Oh, well, that's people's. we could have had a good pickleball court out there and back. Yeah. And Jason Grover, his nickname was Little Man. And so we always would refer to him. What as, where is Jason? And Kurt, we called him Cert. Yeah. Jason, I last I heard lived in St. Anthony. I have a memory of uh, after a deer hunt, Dave had been told to skin the deer or something. I think it was we owned the Emer building at the time. Dad had a business called the Golden Age Pharmacy and a printing shop. We printed stuff and had a folding machine, a printing machine and that over to the north of us in the, we call it the Emer building because Emer Harris and Donna. Uh -huh. And her. It. Yeah, Reed Harris and Susan was the older girl. But anyway, they sold it. I wonder where Susan is. Um, it's across the, Main Street. They had a plumbing business in there and then they sold it to dad or something. And anyway, we had a Golden Age Pharmacy in there, but this deer was supposed to have been skinned and was hanging out behind the building, as I recall, and Paul had a Ford Galaxy, Galaxy 500, 500 is, vehicle, and we were pulling out from the house in Sugar well, on the Main Paul, Street. We were going to town, and Dave wanted to go, and Paul asked him if he skinned that deer. And Dave said, yes, that's the way I remember it. Yeah. It's 
and they got out into the main street right in front of the Merck and Paul could see that deer was not skinned and he had a two-door car and he stopped it put it in park and Dave jumped out and he chased him and of course the car <laughs> is in the middle of the intersection were you still in it then yes I was in the back cowered in the back seat bawling <laughs> And Paul was chasing Because I Dave. thought, sure, Paul was going to kill Dave, and we were going to be sitting on the road. I remember Paul being quite a bit bigger than me, but when I'd get so mad, I'd fight him anyway, and then I'd just get beat up. Okay, we need to talk about Helen McKay. Oh, who tended us when we and were... And how, how is it that she came to... Because she cleaned, too, didn't she, or do the ironing or something? Yeah, she would do that while she was there. But... She just needed to have some spending money and stuff, so she... She and her husband, Al, came from England. Uh-huh. Because she had an English accent. Yeah. And she was only about this tall, isn't that right? She's pretty Matt? small. Yeah, she was a small lady. But we seemed to really enjoy her. I right? loved her Well, so yeah, she was a nice lady, and she'd do the ironing while she was there. And, and if you guys went away for days, she came and stayed with us. Yeah. Thus the infamous... What? Well, we had a couple things when she was there. Is that when Dave threw the tomato soup all over the kitchen walls? I thought it was Paul that did that. I don't remember well, that. Well, it was one of those two. <laughs> I, I do have a it memory was, of Paul, Mrs. but I'll tell that. Mrs. Mrs. McKay was there, yeah. Yeah, I remember that. Well, I remember when I was about 14, I think, and Paul was 16 because he had a driver's license, but I owned a Volkswagen. Oh, and I should tell how come I owned a Volkswagen after I tell this story. But Dad, as I remember, was gone, and we were having dinner, and the kitchen was set up where the sink and the stove and the fridge were all kind of in one room, and then there was kind of a dinette. Yeah. And Paul had fixed his plate, and he got, I don't know, you, I think, Mom, and him got into something. And he took the plate and just smashed threw it down it. and smashed it, and food went everywhere. Went out, got in my car, and drove out to Moody, I think, to be with Tony Graham, or in that little house that Tony had on his, by next to his folks' house. I was so mad I wanted to call the police and report <laughs> a stolen car and stuff. And I don't remember whatever came of that, but after that. Do you remember that, Mother? But I just, no. I just remember him stealing my car. The reason I had a car, <laughs> as I remember, was that I was always prone to saving my money. I moved sprinkler pipe, and I'd saved money, and I had $600 in the bank, and Dad came to me one day and said he needed to borrow the $600 to buy a second car, but it could be my car. Well, it's appropriate that you rolled it then, isn't it? <laughs> we'll tell that story too, I guess, <laughs> now that we brought that up. Anyway, so that's why it was kind of my car, but the family car or something, as I remember it. Well, Do you have I any memory? It. I came, went to Salt Lake June Conference. In a Volkswagen? In the Volkswagen with uh, Marsha. And somebody else. Marsha Grover. Uh -huh. So see, it was a family car. Marsha and, and another gal. Maybe there was three. It was a little red Volkswagen. I think it was a... Yeah, and I had a problem with it, and I got into a service station and took care of it, whatever it was, I don't remember. Whatever it was. Yeah. I think that I broke two or three windshields with my head. One was when we were going down to get the cream to Dowling's, do you remember, and it was raining? Well, I know we went up. And you had to cross the, the train tracks, and it was raining so hard that we missed the little thing and hit the track. <laughs> and I, I broke the windshield with my hand. I don't remember And one, that. it was in one of the Jeeps, and I think it was a back window. Would that be right? Most back Jeeps didn't, or Jeeps didn't have back Well, they had little ones, this yeah. like that Willie's Jeep had yeah. little yeah. square ones or something in the doors. I was standing back there for some <laughs> reason, I don't. Yeah, in those days. We, well, the, the rolling the Volkswagen was, I'd gone out to the Rick's to get cream or something. 
Well, the Rick Sisters, where you were at, I didn't know well, that. Well, I thought I'd gone out there to, yeah, it was cream. I well, we had to have cream for our Wheaties. It was I don't remember that but Rick's is sold cream. Well, or Wildings or something, but it was, well, now it was Wildings. Russ Wildings uh -huh. place. Okay, that sounds Out past right. the Rick's. Yeah. And uh, this is Ray Rick's, I think, because yeah. their son Mark was my age. But yeah. anyway, I'd gone out there in the Volkswagen, and coming back, it was on a gravel road, and I thought it was kind of fun to swish back and forth in the gravel, because you could kind of push the gravel up. I wasn't going overly fast, but anyway, I think and I... you would have been how old? Probably 14, maybe 15. Nice. And you could have a license and drive in the daytime there in Idaho. But, so I got the gravel pushed up, and it flipped, rolled, and it flipped onto its top. And I remember crawling out the window and running down to the Rixes and calling home. And then it seemed like... Mr. Roberts, Bart Roberts, that dial, not dial. Um, it was dial. Elmer Roberts Elmer? had the repair shop. He was Bart's dad. Oh. We, and he's the one that. We should fixed go it. over the vehicles that we owned. Because we owned, the, I, the earliest one I remember was the gold station wagon. The something liner. I was going to say the luxury liner, but that wasn't what it was called. Well, that, and the, that one, Mom? and the white yeah, Pontiac I, I can't remember. station wagons were the it only ones I remember. Off. Well, we had a blue Cougar. Oh, yeah. And we had the old Dodge truck. The Willys Jeep, I remember. And what color was it? Green? Yes, yeah. kind of a dark green or something. Jeep color. Another story about the cars and dad. And we'd gone out to... For Samurai or out by Salmon or something. We'd gotten Ray Rigby was with us because I was riding in Ray Rigby's car and I think Frank Summers was out there with his pickup, his boy Kelly, <clears throat> and anyway, Jerry and Blair Rigby. Or, but for some reason, we're driving along and I'm with the Rigby's and we're behind Dad and the gas tank drops out of that. From under the car. From under the car of that. It wasn't that Buick. the gold station wagon? Yeah, that Buick. And he just keeps driving along because I guess there's gas still in the carburetor or something, and it's a couple miles or something. We pick up the gas tank and catch up to him. And that, but anyway, it was just part of the care that we <laughs> had for our cars. Yeah, well, speaking of cars, I remember when we were traveling, the thing I hated the most in the world was raisin bread that, that we always got when we were traveling. We did? Mm hmm Do you remember? No. Raisin bread, salami. Frankfurters. And cheese. cheese. An a galley salami. Isn't that what Dad yeah. called it? And that was kind of white coated on the uh -huh. outside, that salami. And then buttermilk. That must have been you. No, Dad drank buttermilk. Did you drink it too? Or did, no, she did just did. you drink it, Mom? I, I've always drank buttermilk. Well, when I was in the mission field and we'd been out tracting a long time somewhere in West Virginia and we were very, very hungry but we hadn't eaten lunch and some lady offered us buttermilk and I thought, well, I'm hungry enough I could drink that and I could not get it down. <laughs> I mean, it's I've tra never... It's childhood trauma. Yeah. <laughs> and that, but traveling reminds me of it. We used to go to California for Thanksgiving for quite a few years. It seemed like when we were young. Some yeah, of right. us older kids. And you would put us asleep in the back of the station wagon. Yeah. And then you guys would get up early in the morning and head off and we'd wake up somewhere in Twin somewhere Falls or somewhere and we'd go down and we'd have Thanksgiving dinner. I remember the ones that I own, but Uncle George's family who lived in Sacramento, they would come, but there'd be pygmies everywhere. Yeah. And the things that, I mean, we remember a lot of things, but one of them was you kids get outside. <laughs> We're trying to visit in here. And that 
Children should not be seen should or be heard. Seen and not heard for 24 hours. <laughs> I remember going to um, Seattle once for Thanksgiving, but you were older then in late yes. high school year. That's right. And we stayed at Grandma's the night before and got up at four. At Angie's. Mm -hmm. Because we had quite a caravan, if I remember right. Could have done. Never went to Seattle. So the greatest smell in the world that I remember when we were growing up was when coming home from school and having Frank weenies and sauerkraut and weenies having cooked on the stove, you know, and you walk in and you smell that smell. <coughs> Well, that, and you mentioned the other night about... <laughs> that shell crack. <laughs> but I liked it. It was those big shells, you know, macaroni shells. Oh, yeah. And kind of, it was brown colored, I remember, but whatever spice, and it had hamburger in it, I think. Yeah. I liked it. Well, Jeff that. liked it because on his 50th birthday, that's what he wanted to have. Remember, Mom made it and brought yeah. it down. And what is it called? Or? Shell crab. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, but I it's don't. Italian. It's Italian seasoning. Yeah, Italian shells or something. One one year, I took pesto up to uh, up to uh, Green Canyon. I don't whether it was my birthday or Elaine's or what it was. Well, that would have been after Sugar City. Oh yes. Yeah. You you still have that kettle that mom used to cook that stuff in. Yeah. It's a gray cooking kettle or something. Heavy duty thing. So I just want to go over where you worked. You worked at Ned's Moody Kit well, Produce yeah, in the I, in the warehouse. I was in the office. Oh yeah. And you worked at Ashleman's before that though, didn't you? The shoe store. Mm -hmm. One day one day a week, I think. And are those the only two places that you worked? No, I worked at J.C. Penney. Oh, that was uh, earlier on. Yeah. In your, but you were married when you worked at Penny's. Yeah. Yeah. Tell tell us who some of your good friends were in Sugar City. Some folks that you remember. Well, I can sum that up in a few words. That <laughs> Bonnie Holman. Well. I was telling you the other day, you know, uh, Sister Barris, Ruth. The, Ruth, yeah, the pianist and the yeah. college pro and everything. Well, one day, your really your best friend was Jetty Sue Virgin, wasn't it? Well, Up that was there. because we worked in the MIA together. Uh, but you, I mean, after the flood, you went to her house. Well, yeah, she was the only one that had one. But you were very good friends. Oh yeah, so. Judd and I got along good. We had known each other for a number of years. It just kind of left, you know, lost contact growing up in school. And the, and then Bonnie Holman was your friend. And Bonnie and Elna. Oh yeah, Elna I'd known all my life. Lawrence and Elna. She was a fisher. Yeah. And. Um, Isabel, I guess you weren't really chummy with her, but oh, we were good friends. Isabel Walker. But you were, I mean, Bish and his wife, Bricks, yeah. you seemed to be very good friends with them. Well, Bish had known me since I was a little kid. Whatever her name was that we can't remember. <laughs> I still think it was Madge. Mm -mm. But we're calling Jeff. He'll know he remembers everything. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Coming home from the, oh, coming home from the dry farm, or something, Dad had always stopped there at the Gayway. The Shricks owned that. It was about halfway between Rexburg and Sugar City. What's a Gayway? A, a roadhouse. A pool hall thing? Or yeah. A bar? Oh. Yeah. And where was it? Halfway between Rexburg and Sugar City on the highway. Oh. Hmm. And uh, so Bish should give me all the popcorn I could eat and stuff while we were there. And one day I went over to his house, knocked on the door. You know, I bought all the flowers over there and stuff. And Bish came to the door. And I said, good grief, Bish, what happened to you? Oh, hell, Dee. I got drunk and fell down the stairs. <laughs> he, in 
June of 76, uh, the Teton Dam broke, and Kaylin and I were in Salt Lake at the time, and Mom, you were, were you in shirt, were you at the home that day? I was on my way home from Salt Lake, from California, actually. And so, who was in the home, just Dave? I was in the home. And wasn't Dave working across the street, wasn't yeah. he over at Jim Chemical working <laughs> yeah. for George Wilmore or something? Yeah. Jeff was on his mission yeah. in Scotland. Where would Mike have been with you? He was with. He wasn't with Elaine. But he was not at home. No, he wasn't at home. And I was home packing to go to Girls' State yeah, then on Monday, going to Girls' State. So Lisa and Dave then ended up up at the college, and that's where you went to when you got up here, up there. Well, no. Uh, I went over to some fringe place there in Idaho Falls. The first that I heard on the radio, and I thought, uh, no way. I think they had the Ryrie Dam or something. You thought it was, they'd given the wrong information. Yeah, it, it, it didn't make sense what they said. And so I went over to some fringe place there in Idaho Falls, and uh, I, we talked about it and all. And then when I saw Mary and Jack's house in Rexburg floating down Main Street, I knew we were in trouble. So I called the operator and I said, is there any way I can get through to Sugar City? Ma'am, I'm sorry, there is no more Sugar City. I went on up to Rexburg and uh, of course when you got quite a ways out of town yet, but, you know, there was that garage dealership that sits out. Whatever Chevrolet it was. Yeah. Know, was it? And mm -hmm. that's when you started seeing stuff, and so then I knew. The Ford dealership outside of town, Taylor Chevrolet was inside oh. of town. Rexburg. Got and so we went over to Mother's house, and there's pig footprints in the yard, but that was all. And so I went in, and uh, Dennis had brought a drawer of each one of their clothes up and put it up on the cabinets, but that didn't help. <laughs> and they had gotten in their trailer, and.